Today we're going to talk about Kaya. In my opinion, the easiest way to install Clipper. Hello everybody, Chris here, and in videos in the past when we were doing Clipper, I have touched on Kaya before, but just little bits and pieces here and there. I wanted to do a video based solely on Kaya because during the MKS Skipper install, this video series that I'm currently doing, they have used Kaya to get Clipper installed. So I thought it'd be a great time to go through all the setup of Kaya and how it can make your life easier. Think of Kaya as just a very involved script that allows you to stick all the pieces of Clipper together in one session. It gives you a little menu, you can select the things you want to install, because there are quite a few different pieces. There's the Clipper install, there's Moonraker, which helps stick everything together through API, and then there's a front end, whether it be fluid or mainsail. There's a couple other pieces as well, but these are the three main ones that we're concerned with. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to head to the computer, we're going to check out Kaya, how you can use it on any Linux-based system that you want, and that's what makes it really useful on these types of boards with our Raspberry Pi-like environment. So let's get into it. And just a quick recap from the last video, this is our MKS Skipper board. It does have a Linux environment built on it. It has an ARM chip and it uses ARM being Linux, rather than Raspberry Pi OS like a Raspberry Pi would. We got Linux installed and we got our network connectivity established. And Kaya has a GitHub page. This is an open source project. It's just a tool to help you install Clipper. But the nice part about it is you can install Kaya on any version of Linux including Windows running WSL, but that's more for another video. Here they are kind of focused on Raspberry Pi, but again, a lot of these environments, like the board we're working with today, they run Armbian, not Raspberry Pi OS. And this tool is designed to work on any distribution. So any computer that you can run Linux on, you can install Clipper with this tool. And here we are back to PuTTY, our SSH tool. We're getting ready to log into this board. And I wanted to show you this because they've actually installed Kaya and Clipper under the MKS user. Last video, we were focused on root just to get some things done, but it's probably easier for me to show you how to do this if you log in as MKS. So we're just going to use the username MKS. The password is the same as root, maker base, all one word, lowercase. And when you're in as the MKS user, you can see it right there. If you just do an LS, you'll see all the directories where everything's been installed. They've done mainsail and fluid. You have your Kaya directory as well as Clipper and Moonraker. And after seeing this, this is why I wanted to do a Kaya based video. So let's just start from scratch here. We have all of this installed. That's all fine and good. But what if you don't? It's very easy to get up and running if your board is connected to the internet. Most Linux distributions nowadays are going to have Git, but go ahead and make sure it is installed. You would just do a sudo apt-git install git dash y just allows you to confirm without having to hit y later but just hit that you will need your root password again it is maker base for this board it's already the newest version so we're good there we're in our home directory you can tell that by the tilde if you're not it's probably a good idea to get there so just do cd space tilde that'll get you where you need to be and then you do a git clone to download the kaya project there's a lot of great guides out here on how to do this, but this is git clone. You go to github.com, the username, which I don't know how to pronounce that. I wish I did. Thank you for this project. And then kaya.git. I'll leave a link to a guide that I use to get these commands. It's very straightforward, but this will download it. Now it's telling us that it already exists because it is on this board but that's all you would have to do. It's going to download it, put it in that directory, and then you'll be ready to start using it. And no matter if you've done an install already, you can go ahead and fire the script back up and make changes if you wish. So from here, we just run Kaya SH, the shell script, because basically that's all it is. So we're going to do dot forward slash Kaya, because that's the directory that it's in, and then Kaya dot SH. It looks like the version that MakerBase is using needs an update. It's not the newest one. If you got it from GitHub, it's going to be. We're not going to update now. We'll save that for later, just so I can show you what's going on here. And here's the menu to get all the pieces of Clipper installed through Kaya. It's telling us what we already have installed. 
But these are pretty much all of the options here that you have to utilize Kaya. You can also use this to remove and update different versions of this software, whether it be Clipper, Moonraker, Mainsail, what have you. So I'm actually going to go into option three and I'm gonna remove some of these services so that I can show you how to install them from scratch. It's very straightforward. I just want you to see me do it. So after I removed a few things, this is more like what you would see if you were doing this for the first time. There's nothing installed. But you just go down the list basically to get the things installed that you need. So we'll just do one and we're gonna start with Clipper. And we're gonna utilize Python 3 because that's the newest version. Two is probably not supported in a lot of instances. So let's do one. From here, this is one of the biggest advantages to using Kaya. It will allow you to do multiple installs on the same board. We're only gonna do one today, but be careful if you're setting up too many, it could crash the board you're running. But take advantage of this, we might do a video just on multiple instances. Since it's dedicated to this board, we really only need one. So we'll just stick with one. Again, you will need access to the internet because it's gonna download a lot of things. And after five or 10 minutes, depending on how many things you had to download, it had to install. This was pretty up to date. Clipper is now installed. So then you would move to Moonraker. This is the piece, the web server piece that just helps you stick everything together. So we'll just do two and we'll do Y to install it. And now Moonraker's set up. So now we move to the web interfaces. Do you like Fluid, Mainsail? You could even use Octoprint from here if you'd like but we're gonna go with mainsail to start just because it's number three. So we'll hit three and we'll let it start its install. Download recommended macros, you can do that if you like. We'll just hit yes. And mainsail is installed, it's very quick. Now, what if you wanna try fluid too? Mainsail and fluid both use the web port. So the browser port, port 80. That's the default port that every internet site uses. If we do four to install Fluid, it's gonna say we have a port conflict. If you would like to try both, just install one as your main interface. I like to do mainsail, and then install the other one on a separate port. That way you can try them both out. So we're on port 80 by default. Let's just make Fluid on port 81. We'll hit enter. Sure, we'll grab the macros for that one as well. And now both are installed. And before we go any further, let's check that out. So if we go to the IP of our MKS board, it's gonna to default to mainsail, because that's the one we installed first. It's on port 80. If we just do colon 81 next to our IP up here in the address bar, it goes to fluid. And you can use these simultaneously, whichever one you like, but this is a great way to try them both out. So let's pause for a moment and talk about what we just did. You might have seen me run Clipper installs manually in the past. There's a lot of commands you have to run to get everything strung together to be able to get to that main sale moment where you can interact with your printer. With this Kaya install, basically all we did was run one command to download the project and then one command to start the shell script. Everything else has been menu driven. We just go down by the numbers and get everything installed that we want. And you saw that we can install multiple instances. This script takes care of all of the ports and things you have to change to be able to run more than one at a time. As well as you saw, we did mainsail and fluid on the same board. Now you can try them both out. This takes all the guesswork on doing these complex installs. And there's even more to check out, which we'll go back to the computer and look at a few more things. So Clipper's installed. We've got all the pieces put together so we can get to mainsail or fluid and start controlling our printer. Now we're ready to start configuring the printer, but that's more in the printer.cfg file. We'll tackle that later. There are other options you can utilize in Kaya. You can use Clipper screen. You see this down here, so you can utilize touchscreen. It'll get all that set up for you. Octoprint, like I said before. There's just some G-code tools. Also, Obico for Clipper. That's the AI print failure detection. We've done videos on that in the past, but you can install that right from here if you wish. Octo Everywhere, that's remote monitoring. We've touched on that many times. They have Mobile Raker down here. That's a remote driven interface for Moonraker. Don't know much about it, but we could do that from this menu. And then the one I wanna to touch on is Crow's Nest. This is the webcam streamer. 
So I'm just going to do 12 and hit enter. And we have hit an error. You can see Crow's Nest, it doesn't like the distribution that we're on. We're on Debian 10, Buster. It's no longer in support of this distribution, so it can't install it. Now you noticed when we started this, before I removed them, Crow's Nest was there. And that's part of the problem with these manufacturers using distributions of their own. The good news here is that we could just reflash the SD card like I did in the last video. A link to that will be in the description. You can just go back to the distribution before we updated it and things will work. Everything they had installed. As long as you don't update to newer versions of Crow's Nest or things like that, that might not work with this distribution. And as I said in the last video, if they were to share these properly, we'd get to newer distributions so we wouldn't be so far behind and we wouldn't run into problems like this. But we'll see what happens in the future. There are a few more features of Kaya that we need to check out that make your life easier. So we've seen the install part. You can do a 2 for update. It's going to take all the versions of everything you have installed, even Kaya itself, and give you options to do upgrades from here. You can also do these from mainsail and fluid for the most part but this might be easier for you to get the updates done if you have multiple instances or something like that. Again, you can remove packages if you'd like. We saw that at the beginning. There are some advanced options. You can perform a rollback. If you have an update issue to a new version that's causing a problem, it will allow you to roll it back. For the firmware items here, that's going to be in additional videos. But this gives you tools to do the build and flash of the physical board. The MCU chip, the 3D printer part of your board. We'll talk about that in the future. I personally think it's just a little easier to flash it with the actual clipper menus, but we'll talk about it. And a few other things over here. You can install different themes for main sale, change your host name, and whatnot. And if you do six, you'll go into settings. And there's a few things you can do in here. You can allow unstable releases. But the thing that I like the most is automatic backups before updates. If you hit 4, you can disable or enable it. I would keep it enabled. This is going to allow you to do some of those rollbacks. So it keeps track of updates that you've made. You never know when an upgrade is going to go sideways. This will allow you to get back up and functioning in case something bad happens. A great feature. So there's everything you need to know about Kaya. Again, it makes the Clipper install a lot simpler and much more versatile. So there it is, the Kaya utility you can use to help you install Clipper and all the things that go with it. Again, I think this is by far the easiest way to get it done, especially if you have a more advanced config, multiple instances, you'd like to use more than one interface, all that good stuff. And it is open source and free for you to use, so if you're trying to get Clipper installed and you're struggling, this might be the solution for you. Now this was kind of a have-to video, because we never really did a video on Kaya, we just touched on it a little bit. But now we understand it, and we can continue on with more videos with our MKS Skipper install. So hopefully you found this helpful, that is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.